Chair recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Jones, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, over the weekend I read an article by the Associated Press that the French have made a decision to fast-track its withdrawal from Afghanistan and bring troops home by the end of 2013 instead of the end of 2014. If France follows through with this accelerated drawdown, they will join other countries like Canada and the Netherlands who have also drawn down their forces in recent years. I believe these countries are on the right track. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Defense has recently been asked to find over $490 billion in cuts. We are currently spending $10 billion a month, which equates to $120 billion a year in Afghanistan. By bringing our troops home now, we would be saving hundreds of billions of dollars that would prevent the Department of Defense from cutting other military programs. It simply is common sense to bring our troops home now and not wait. Mr. Speaker, I would like to quote from January the 20th, 2012 New York Times article by Matthew Rosenberg titled, Afghanistan Soldiers Step Up Killing of Allied Forces. Let me read that again. A Afghanistan soldiers step up killings of allied forces. And I quote from the article, American and other coalition forces here are being killed in increasing numbers by the very Afghan soldiers they fight alongside and train in attacks motivated by deep-seated animosity between the supposedly allied forces, according to American and Afghan officers and a classified coalition report obtained by the New York Times. Mr. Rosenberg further states in his article, and I quote, a decade into the war in Afghanistan, the report makes clear that these killings have become the most visible symptom of a far deeper ailment, ailment, excuse me, ailment plaguing the war effort. The contempt each side holds for the other, never mind the Taliban, the ill will and mistrust runs deep among civilians and military on both sides, raising questions about what future role the U.S. and its allies can expect to play in Afghanistan. Mr. Speaker, more important than the money are the young men and women who are sacrificing their lives, limbs, and families by serving in a corrupt nation led by a corrupt leader. Beside me, Mr. Speaker, is a poster that I have been bringing to the floor from time to time of a young soldier from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, who's sitting in a wheelchair, Mr. Speaker, with both legs gone and an arm gone with his lovely wife standing beside his wheelchair showing him their new apartment. How many more young men and women have to die? How many more young men and women have to lose their legs, their arms? And the sad part about it, Mr. Speaker, is history has shown that no great nation in the history of the world has ever changed Afghanistan, and we're not going to change it either. History has proven the fact time and time again it is time to bring our troops home from Afghanistan. Before closing, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the story of my visit to Walter Reed, which is now at Bethesda, Maryland, and the young Marine Corporal from Camp Lejeune, which I have the privilege to represent, said to me with his mom in the room, why don't we come home, Congressman? Why don't we come home? It is time that this administration and this Congress say to the American people, we're not going to wait to 2014 to bring our troops home. We're going to start bringing them home in 2013. And with that, Mr. Speaker, in closing, I ask God to please bless our men and women in uniform. I ask God to please bless the families who've given a loved one dying for freedom in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I'll close by asking God three times, God, please, God, please, God, please continue to bless America. And I yield back the balance of my time.